for me I cannot tell it all what the Lord has done for me I cannot tell it all what the Lord has done for me I cannot tell it all He sent me and washed me yeah. what the Lord has done for me oh God with Jesus joy would you stand on your feet as we look in the oracles of God's word Genesis chapter number 15 Genesis chapter number 15 examine from verse number 1 it says after these things the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying fear not Abram I am thy shield and exceeding great reward. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> and Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. <laughs> and Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, This shall not be thine heir. But that that shall come forth out of thy own bowel shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said to him, Look now towards the heaven. Everybody read it. Tell the stars. <laughs> if thou art able to number them, and he said, so shall thy seed be. And he believed the Lord. And it was counted to him for righteousness. All of that was good. But my emphasis is in verse number five. And he brought him up abroad and said, look towards the heaven. Tell the star your neighbor said tell the stars oh come on say tell the stars oh come on come on come on come on tell the stars tell the stars tell the stars I need somebody now to tell the stars oh my god oh kapaya my god my god touch your neighbor said tell the stars tell the stars please understand people of God uh, that the journey of many in this room is like the journey of Abraham uh, there are many in this room whose journey uh, is synonymous with the journey of Abraham you say what do you mean uh, you must understand that Abraham was the first man uh, Abraham holds a patent uh, of a walk with God uh, 
Abraham was the first man in his lineage to walk with God in total abandonment. Abraham was the first man to walk with God in total submission, in totality. You remember in Genesis chapter 14 and verse 22, Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to Elohim Elion, the Lord Most High, the owner of the heavens and the earth. In other words, I have sworn allegiance. I have sworn allegiance to serve God with everything in me. I have made a covenant with Elohim Elion. You must understand people of God that Abraham was coming from a generation where neither father or mother ever served God. There was no, no antecedent, nobody. His father was an idol worshiper. But in chapter 12 and verse number 1, he came to church one day and heard a pastor preaching and he heard the voice of God call him say Abraham come out from your father's house to a land that I will show you and I will make you a great nation Abraham was the first man to say for God I live for God I die Abraham was the first man to serve God please understand when I tell you there was a call upon Abraham there was a massive call upon him Abraham was called to be a trailblazer Abraham was called to come through uncharted horizons he was called to walk through uncharted landscapes Abraham was the first man to create a path for men to serve God there are many in this room you have a call of God upon your life just like Abraham after the order of Isaiah 58 in verse number 12 he said they that be of you shall be called the builder of the old waste place they shall raise a foundation for many generations you shall be called the repairer of the bridge the restorer of paths to dwell my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. There is a call upon your life, just like Abraham, after the order of Isaiah 58 and 12. You are being called to build the old waste place, to raise a foundation for many generations. You have been called to repair the breach. You have been called to restore path for men to dwell. You have been called to restore path for men to prosper. You have been called to restore path for marriages to flourish. You have been called to restore path for men to become shakers and movers. You have been called into your family for such a time as this. There is a call upon your life. You will do what your father could not do you will go where your father could not enter you will achieve what your mother could not achieve if you are the one shot fire yeah, 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 yeah. i need depth on my mic touch your neighbor say you are called come on say you are called come on say you are called there is a call upon your life i say there is a call upon your life you will not fail him I say you will not fail him. There is an assignment upon you. There is a generation that is waiting for you to show up. For I heard him say the endless expectation of the creation and was the manifestation of the sons of God. You will not fail your generation. I say you will not fail your generation. There are widows that is waiting for your manifestation. There are orphans waiting for your manifestation. And I'm here to tell you you will show up you will show up you will show up you will show up shot fire yeah, yeah. touch your neighbor say tell the stars understand until Abraham there was no foundation <laughs> Igandu's guy until Abraham there was no foundation. Abraham
Abraham was called to raise up foundations for many generations. Baruch Kaba. In other words, maybe you were not born with silver spoon, but by God, before your time on earth is done, you will create golden spoons for your children, 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 children. Hey, touch your neighbor, say neighbor. You are going to be the one. You will hold a patent of prosperity. You will hold a patent of long life. You will hold a patent of a walk with God. You will hold a patent. I am a mama masha. Now you are going to mess me up when you keep on standing like this. I prophesy. God will use you. God will use you. You will pull down altars. You will break down walls. You will open gates. Oh my God. My goodness. I am mama. Please, you, you need to be seated. Ah, please understand this. Abraham was called to first begin by raising foundation. Only a fool builds castles in the sky. Tell somebody begin at the foundation. Come and say begin at the foundation. This is where many get it wrong. They come to God. They want to cut corners. They come to God. They want to skip the elementary and the principles of foundation. And they want to skip to the part where they are living happily ever after. Where they are licking ice cream and everything is nice. The devil is a liar. You must first begin at the foundation. For if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? You cannot build unless there has been first a foundation. You are coming from a generation where there is no foundation laid. You are coming from background where nobody had a walk with God enough to lay foundation. That is why your battle is heavy because you are not just called to prosper. You are called to invent a foundation. You are called to invent a legacy where others after you shall be the head and not the tail. Oh my God. That your neighbor say neighbor. You are called to be an inventor. You are called to create a foundation for prosperity that eyes have not seen, that ears have not heard, that has not entered the heart of man. What God will do, it shall be good measure, it shall be pressed there, it shall be shaken together, it shall be running over. You don't serve a dead God. You serve a mighty God. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. When God says yes, no man can say no. When God lifts you up, no man can pull you down. God is on your side. Power on your side. Grace on your side. Lifting on your side. Lift one hand shot power. Raise another hand shot fire. Raise one leg shot fire. Raise another leg shot fire. Turn around shot fire. Scatter yourself all of fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody said, tell the stars. You will build the old waste places. You will raise a foundation for many generations. If the Lord tarries and the earth remains, your children, 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 they will carry your picture as an inheritance. They will refer to you as the patriarch, the man that invented wealth and prosperity. They will remember you as the one that broke the back of poverty. They will remember you as the man that broke the back of sickness. Oh my God, my God. Touch your neighbor, say God gonna use you. 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 So Abraham was called to build the old waste places 
what ought, ought waste, what made it old and wasted the errors of their fathers the life of his predecessors all they did in their hundred years in the life they live was to mess things up all they did because they had no work with God they made things worse they had covenants with devils they made agreements with deities so all of that made the whole place wasted so somebody now has to come and clean up the mess I am my high some tell you may say someone's got to do the job say someone's got to do the job someone has to rise up to clean up the mess of a thousand years someone has to are you hearing me so no wonder no wonder you are going through what you're going through maskadia ziza dazia he said you are called to build the old waste place and you shall raise a foundation for many generations you remember abraham in hebrews chapter 11 and 10 the bible says abraham sought for a city that had foundation whose maker and builder was god abraham sought for a city that had foundation because until now he had no existing city that had foundation whose maker and builder every other foundation that abraham met was built on idol worship was built on resume was built on mental prowess but no one until abraham was able to say i will build my house upon the same foundation he understood that anything you build on the wrong foundation will crumble like a deck of cards only a matter of time but i heard him say any man that hears my word hey and do it is is like a man that built his house on the rock the rain came the wind blew he said but he did not fall because it was founded upon the rock jesus is that rock jesus is that rock tell your neighbor said jesus is that rock the rock of ages that cannot fail the rock of ages that can be broken the rock of ages that can be destroyed touch your neighbor say neighbor i have built my life upon the rock i have built my destiny upon the rock i have built my tomorrow upon the rock hey Ooh. i feel the holy ghost i feel the holy ghost touch your neighbor say neighbor i am standing upon the rock i can be moved heaven and earth may pass away i will not be moved though the earth be shaken i can be moved no matter who comes no matter who goes i am standing upon the rock no matter who leaves me no matter who accepts me i am standing upon the rock and as long as i'm standing upon the rock no weapon formed against me shall prosper no matter who gathers against me i will not be moved for i am standing Touch your neighbor, say neighbor. I am standing. My God. Abraham sought for a city that had foundation that will not waste his time. Why invest so much capital? On a foundation that will not last. Sasai. Say neighbor. Why invest so much resource? Three jobs and a half. On a foundation that is not sure. I'm trying to move to telling the stars. But we cannot go up. Unless we first of all address the ground. I want to pause here to submit to you that what God is doing in your life 
is transgenerational. To Abraham and his seed. Touch them and say, neighbor, it began with you, but it will not end with you. God is a covenant keeping God. What God is doing with you, it will go past you. When your time on earth is done, after you don't live to be 99 years and a half, when you close your eyes to sleep, your children will take over. But there is good news. They will not fight the battle you fought. They will not go through the hell you went through. They will not cry the tears you cried. They will not suffer what you suffer because you have broken foundation. You have raised up a foundation. And I'm here to tell you, your children, the generation of the upright shall be mighty upon the earth. The smallest one shall be a thousand. The least one shall be a strong nation. Touch your neighbor, say neighbor. Your children shall be blessed. Your children, children, they shall prosper. They shall live in health. They shall live in peace. Since I was born, now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. No, he said, begging bread. Your seed will not beg bread. Your seed will not beg bread. They shall be blessed in the field. They shall be blessed when they go. They shall be blessed when they come. Touch your neighbor's and neighbor. My seed shall be blessed. You all need to sit down. You're going to mess me up. You keep standing. You're going to mess me up. Hi. Hi. What God is doing with you. Somebody say trans generation. Some folk don't know nothing about this. Because until now, what they have known is generational causes. That's what they have known. All they have known up till now is generational causes. Maski I. But your children will know generational blessing. Your grandchildren will understand generational blessing. Your great grandchildren, they will walk into generational blessing. Kaisia. Sir, this stuff is not Old Testament. It's not. Second Timothy 1 and 5. Paul said, My son Timothy, the grace you carry, first of all, began with your grandmother Lewis. And then he entered your mother Eunice. And then you have become a benefactor. You have become an inheritor of a grace that first started with your grandmother. Hey! Touch your neighbor. Say neighbor. Say neighbor. Your work with God. Your work with God carries blessing. Not just for you, but for your children. Children, children. <laughs> when I call to remembrance the grace that was on your grandmother Lewis. The grace that your mother invented. Timothy's grandmother was the inventor of grace in her family. Timothy's grandmother Lewis, she holds the patent, my God, of her work with God. When she was done, she handed it to her grandmother, to her mother Eunice. When Eunice was done, handed it to Timothy. Timothy became the first bishop. Makabaha. She became the first bishop. So if you look at Timothy, you want to pray like him. You want to go to school like him. You are a joker. You are trying to achieve what a man has just inherited from generations before. Timothy is standing on existing protocol. Timothy is standing on the prayer life of her grandmother. Timothy is standing on the fasting life of his mother. Timothy is standing of the work that her mother had with God. I prophesy your children they will inherit your prayer life, your work with God, your prosperity. Somebody shout fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see why 
All fingers are not equal. So now you are in the same class with Timothy. Look at Timothy. He knocks on the door. In fact, before he gets there, the door is like automatic. But look at you. The same door that opened on his own to Timothy. Look at you at that door now for seven years. Seven years. You are saying life is not fair. It's not fair. You are right. <laughs> Who said God was fair? You all sit down. Kansa Idai. Sai guy. Your children. 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 The way that we excel in life. The way that we accelerate in destiny. You say, Pastor, what do you mean? Because now this thing may be new to some of you. Understand, when I say a patent, Abraham holds a prototype. Nobody ever paid tight until Abraham. Abraham was the first man to pay tight. Until Abraham, there was no tight. But in Genesis chapter 14, the Lord said to Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I want to teach you something. You are going to become financially committed to me. Amen. Abraham said, what do you mean? Everything I give you, if I give you ten, give me one. If I give you a hundred, give me ten. Father, what does it mean? It's called the covenant of tithing. Lord, what does it mean? Abraham, you may not understand. Just trust me. So in Genesis 14 and verse 20, Abraham was returning from work one day and he met a pastor called Melchizedek. Abraham had a pastor. His pastor was Melchizedek. And the Bible says he came to Melchizedek and he gave him a tithe. He gave him the tithe of all. Somebody said the tithe of all. Come and say the tithe of all. Abraham met his pastor Melchizedek and said from today till Jesus come anything God gives me I will give to sent as my tithe. So he gave his tithe to his pastor Abraham and the Bible says and Melchizedek prayed for him. He said Abraham, the most look, he says and he blessed him. Someone say he blessed him. He said come on go back now. He says and he blessed him and he blessed him and said blessed be Abraham of the most high possessor of the heavens and earth. In verse 20 come on and he blessed the most high God which had delivered him from his enemy and Gave him what? Tide of what? Of all. Sir, the Bible says after he gave him tide. Read the next verse in verse 21. And then the king of Sodom. Who is Sodom? Sodom is a type of the world. Sodom is the world. The anti, the, the, uh, the, the world that we live in today. The Bible said the kings of those world. They came to him with their ideas. With their suggestion. He said, give me everything. But take the goods for yourself. I like what Abraham said in verse 22. Abraham said just a moment ago. I lifted my hands. And I swore allegiance to Elohim Elion. The Lord most high. Possessor of the heavens and the earth. I will not take anything from you. Not even a shoelace. So that you don't say you have made Abraham rich. My riches will not come from my career. My riches will not come from my job. My riches will come through my covenant work with God. I have lifted my hands to the Lord Elohim most high. Anything I have, it will come from him. And I heard him say the blessings of the Lord. It make it rich. It is God that will make me rich. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Are you understanding how men work with God? The king of Sodom, which means the minds of this earth. They said, Abraham, you need, a, you need three jobs and a half, including the one that we take it from church on Sunday. <laughs> you know, some folk think now that if they can get an extra job that can take them, even if they, even if they miss church on Sunday, life will be better. You are a joker. You are a joker. Sounds like E.I. There's Andres guy. Asiai. It's not second jobs, third job, fourth job. You can get seven jobs, sir. God can give you one job. Zasas Gadi. 
He says, so the king of Sodom said, give me the men, you take all the goods. Everyone said, no. Just a moment ago, my pastor told me that it is God that will make me rich. I have lifted my hands. I have sworn allegiance to Elohim Elion. Do I have 10 men and 10 women in this room who have lifted their hands to Elohim Elion and have sworn allegiance that for God I live, for God I die, no retreat, no surrender. Come rain or high water, I will bless the Lord at all time and his praise shall continually be in my mouth bless the lord all my soul and all that is within me touch your neighbor say neighbor i have sworn allegiance to god i have sworn allegiance to elohim elion Kai. there is a difference between men who understand these things? There is a difference. Abraham understood. If I have it, it must come from God. When the Lord told Abraham to give tight, Abraham did not understand, but he obeyed. We did not know because when Abraham was done, he handed the same thing to Isaac. Shai, Zazaz, Ganai. Isaac examined the thing. He used it and handed it to his son, Jacob. Jacob used it. It worked and handed it to the twelve. Ancient words. Kai. I'm Kai. I'm talking about holy words. Long preserved. Handed down to the ages. There are some principles you are going to teach your children. This thing was handed down by the patriarch. We did not know what he was doing. Until we see the Pauline revelation. In Hebrews chapter 7. In verse number 9. The Bible says. And we may say that Levi. Somebody say Levi. Receive who is receiving the tithe on earth. He also paid tithe in whom? In Abraham, the next verse, for the Bible says he was yet in the loins of whom? His father Abraham, when he met Melchizedek and gave the tithe to Melchizedek. You don't understand. Somebody say Levi. Who is Levi? Levi is the great grandson of Papa A.B. Papa A.B. gave birth to Isaac. Isaac gave birth to Jacob. Jacob gave birth to twelve. Levi is the son of Papa, of the grandson of Papa Abi. But according to Genesis 14, when Papa Abi gave his tithe to Melchizedek, he was not yet pregnant. He had no child. Yes, Him and Sarah were barren, believing God for the fruit of the womb. Unknown to him that as he was releasing his tithe, the blessing of the tithe didn't just rest on him, but it went down into his loins. Hey! Kamsares Kappa! Zaruskaya! The tithe he was given, it, it began to invade his DNA. The Admaska, the work, the covenant work of Abraham invaded and altered his DNA so that his children became inheritors. Look at Levi. Levi became the priest, the priesthood. He occupied the office of the priesthood and was given the mandate to receive the tithe. Sir, this grace did not come to Levi because he prayed or labored. It came because of his work that Abraham had. Levi became a benefactor. When you stand to give your tithe to God, let this be embedded in your heart. I am paying my tithe, not just for myself, but for what? My children, my children, my children. The blessing of Abraham, when Abraham gave his tithe to Abraham, to, to Melchizedek, Melchizedek pronounced a blessing. You are going to possess 
the heavens and the earth. Till today, the owners of landmass in America. Go on, go on, go on. Jewish men, they are wealth. Old money. Somebody say old money. Go and start a business like a Jew. <laughs> why you are why you are why you are thanking God for one million in a year? They are saying, Father, thank you. One million in a month. Son, son, brother, sir, what is working for them is oil. Yes, sir. Ancient oil. Yes, sir. If I want to mess retitle this, I will call it ancient oil. Kansai. Sir. You work with God. You see this church you are sweeping. You see this church you are sweeping. You see this church you are sweeping. If the earth remains and the Lord tarries, God will assign angels to sweep for your children's children's children. You see your faithfulness in the house of God. Your service to God in this house. Your children shall be benefactors. I'm trying to get to my message. And so, Abraham haven't been a prototype of this work. After serving God for so many years, he begins to say to himself, what is my reward? Lord, I have left all to follow you. So what is my reward? The Bible says, after these things, Genesis 15 and 1. What after these things? There must have been a period of uncertainty in Abraham's life. Sir, when you work with God, you are not going to know everything. There will be moments of absolute uncertainties. You are wondering, am I serving God? <laughs> Eli, Eli, Lamak, Sabak, Tanai. Sir, we need to teach these things. Though. Because now you think that Abraham was just uh, the father of faith. He just faith. <laughs> there was a time he couldn't believe God for one. Kansai. There was a time he was only believing that his servant will be his heir. He had to learn it from the scratch. Sansai. Are we okay now? Sir, Abraham had to learn just like you. He was not born with it, but he learned it. Listen. The Bible says, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham. He said, fear not. Why would God say fear not? God anticipated his heart. Because at this point, his heart is hanging by a thread. Uncertainty of the future. He looked at his life. There is no future. He says, I'm going childless. There is no, he's, he's in despair. Abraham, fear not. I am thy shield and exceedingly great reward. Can I explain what this means? Literally speaking, he says, Abraham, for following me, your reward shall be great. The direct translation of this word. He says, Abraham, because you have followed me like you followed me, your reward shall be great. Amen. You remember Matthew 19, 27. Peter said, we have left all to follow you. We have left everything to follow you. What is our reward? For following me, your reward shall be great. Touch your neighbor, say neighbor. For following God, your reward shall be great. They don't believe you find someone, say neighbor. For following God, for serving him, your reward shall be very, 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 very great. You know, you know, sometimes, sometimes when I'm alone, I just begin to think about reward. Oh, so I just begin to think about it. I just begin to say, Lord, so you mean, you know, because I just begin to think about it. I, I was telling somebody yesterday, I said, you know, all my life I grew up serving Jesus. All my life. All my life. I don't remember much of my childhood. I don't. I don't know. I don't know anything. All I remember is from the moment I developed consciousness, I just love God. Seven days I was in church. Seven days. Can't get some folk to come to church twice a week. Jokers. Jokers. <laughs> some folk want from God but they can't give to themselves. Seven days. Using my leg at these bends. <laughs> my house to church 
was one hour, one way. My leg get this bends never failed. After a while, I upgraded from leg get this bends to bicycle bends. Kai, I love God. Kai, my goodness, I'm not impressing you. I love him. The, David says, search my heart. Sir, I have loved God from the womb. I was three months old when a voodoo priest came to my house. My mother who was serving idol, they were doing, throwing their chicken bones and doing sacrifice. The voodoo priest looked at my mother. He said, this child you are carrying. I was three months old. He said, this child said he came to serve God. When he said it to me, he hit me by surprise. But I was not surprised. But I was happy that somebody else knew. I don't know what else the voodoo priest said, but that one was spot on, spot on. I came, I came to serve God. I came to serve God, my God. I came to serve God. I came for this cause I was born. I was born to serve him. My life shall bring God glory. My life shall reflect, oh my goodness, before my time on earth is done, this earth we know a man called rich walk the shores of this earth and serve God with all his heart, with all his soul. I was born to serve God. I came to serve him. I came to serve him. So I don't know what you are doing with your life. I don't know what you are doing with your life. Maybe, maybe you were born to work for the government. Maybe you were born to hustle in life. But I was born to serve him. I was born to serve him. I was born to serve him. Somebody said, Pastor, are you not tired? You are traveling every week. <laughs> Two of my daughters, they were coming from vacation. They met me at Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris. <laughs> We landed, we took the same flight from Paris to, to, to Houston. From airport, I came to church. I didn't see them in church. Following, I said, I didn't see you in church. <laughs> the one said, Pastor, I took a nap. I woke up at 12 midnight. <laughs> the next one replied, Pastor, I woke up 4 a.m. <laughs> By 4 a.m., I was already praying. Kanzai, Sazai, I was born. I was born to serve him. My life will mean nothing. If I find the cure for corona, it will mean nothing. If I find the cure for cancer, it will mean nothing if I don't serve God. I was born to serve him. My life is an expression of his goodness. I was born to serve him. What gives you joy? What is your excitement? What tickles you? What makes you toss in under your blanket at night? What, what, what gives you butterflies? When I remember that for the rest of my life I will serve him. You know what Paul said? He said, I'm pressed between two things. Whether to depart and be with the Lord, which is far better for me. He said, but to stay with you will mean I have to labor more. He said, but for your sake I will stay here. So I can labor some more. So when his time on earth was done, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have won, I have kept the faith. He said, all that is left for me now, a crown of righteousness with the Lord, the righteous God shall give to me at his appearing, not just me, but all those that long for his appearing. So there is a reward that can never fade. There is a crown of reward that can never fade for a man who serves God, for a man who decides to say, for God that live, for God that die, I will turn my back against the hell with the word. Oh my goodness, I'm looking for a generation who will turn around and seek God for there is a blessing for a generation who will set their heart to seek God for the rest of eternity you will be singing and dancing and chanting for the rest of eternity when you serve God when you serve God 
You will be singing and dancing and chanting for the rest of it. If I don't, my goodness. Somebody say, tell the stars. I will, I, will, I, will, I will touch on this better in second service. So Abraham says, so what is my reward? The Lord says, my son, for following me, first of all, your reward shall be very great. So Abraham says, Lord, at this level, eh, if you don't bless me again, I'm already blessed, are you aware? Oh, you're not hearing me. <laughs> Abraham, when he started with God, he had nothing. At this point, he's enjoying blessing. He said, God, what? if you don't bless me again, I'm already blessed. Can I submit to you? At this level of ministry, when I was growing, I never dreamt. I never dreamt because of what life was then. Because of the experiences I saw. The first church I pastored. Eh? You know, it was a one time we had a big hall. You know, it was a big hall we were using. I didn't say it was full, I said it was a big hall. <laughs> <laughs> so one day there was a bigger event happening, so they had to tell us to go upstairs. So all 12, 12 of us <laughs> we used the room upstairs. My goodness, the room was like nine ceiling by nine ceiling. It was a full house. <laughs> When 12 of us entered that small room, it was like overflow. I said, Jesus, I have arrived, 12 members. <laughs> I was telling a son yesterday. Somebody came to me some time ago. He said, he said Pastor, if you pay this amount, we'll give you 29,000 followers on, on, on YouTube. You are laughing. At that time, 29,000 seemed like <laughs> you have arrived. Say, I never dreamt of. Now, this is first service. Folks are standing. Look at first. Folks are standing. There are people in this room now who came from outside of state who flew to attend the service. God has exceeded everything I ever hoped and dreamed in life. He has exceeded. I'm now on his timetable. Are we okay now? When I go to the nations, I hide. Literally, I hide. To the glory of God. I hide. I, I just, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not comfortable with it. Bishops come show and say, Pastor, look at my phone. I preach your messages. Can't. I am telling you what God can make out of a nothing. He can make something out of absolutely nothing. When you abandon yourself to follow him. That is why the worst thing you can do is to play games with him. Because he's got all there. You don't. The earlier you make up your mind to be real with him, the better for you. You cannot fake it and make it. You can't. I'm sorry. They told you fake it or make it. With God, you cannot fake it and make it. You are either real. So Abraham says, what are you going to give me seeing I go childless? The Lord says, your problem is in your statement. What shall you give me seeing that I go childless. So the Lord says, what are you seeing? What are you seeing? Your problem is your vision. Say neighbor. What are you looking at? You don't have perspective at all. Because everybody that surrounds you is like Nazareth. There is no, there is no father to show you what a millionaire, what it, what it means to be a millionaire. There is no example from your lineage of who a millionaire is. There is no example of what a good marriage is. There is no example. Nothing. So Abraham, everything around him made him look down. What do you see? What do you see? What do you see? The what you are seeing now is affecting you. There are many of you that need to live where you are mentally you need to live where you are i was telling somebody came to my office one time and was telling me what he wants to do i said write it down he says what he was telling me about his you know i would say what, what do you what do you want to do and he was giving me i said have you written it down 
He said, Pastor, I'm just telling you. I said, write it down. Be very clear. Make it plain. Can I tell you? My first, my first time to leave home was to go to college. And I grew up in a very nice home. <laughs> Why are you laughing, honey? <laughs> my bed sheet was... Anyway. <laughs> so, so when I was going to leave home, <laughs> I began to write the things I wanted to have in my room in school. You know, this I'm going to college, so my college room. I began to write it down. Number one, color TV. I used the word color. I didn't. I said color TV. Because up until this time, what I had was black and white that I covered with lucozet, lucozet, lucozet. No. <laughs> All these American folk don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know lucozet? There is that film, that orange film that wraps around it. So my TV... <laughs> So my TV then was covered with Lucas at film. So everybody was orange. <laughs> <laughs> and every so often when you are watching it, the image starts going to, to <laughs> you got to slap it. Pie! Then we stand still. If you don't slap it very well, it starts going pop, 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 pop. <laughs> so you got to be real smart. There is a the way you tap it. Pa! And then it stands. <laughs> All these American folk are, are laughing. You don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Do I have a witness here? Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> so, first on my agenda, color TV. Number two, VHS. I didn't say DVD. <laughs> ah! VHS. Number three, center rug. <laughs> Number four, air bed. Air bed. Not mattress. <laughs> there is mattress. There is mattress. <laughs> I didn't have mattress. I had mattress. <laughs> Number four. Was it four? Number five. Number five. Portable, portable fridge. I'm on the altar. I'm not lying. No. Portable fridge. I had all of these things listed. Then number six. Six CD changer. <laughs> what is it like six CD changer? What is that? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Listen, you are laughing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here is the punchline. When I finished everything and I wrote the price, the total of the thing came to thirty-five thousand Nigerian currency. Thirty-five thousand naira. <laughs> when I saw the list, <laughs> thirty-five thousand. <laughs> I wanted it and I threw it away because from where I was 35,000 it looked like 35,000 US dollars in fact that's too small from where I was 
It was like something I could not touch with a 10 foot pole. It seemed impossible. Okay, for my American folk, 35,000 naira is what? That's about 25 US dollars. About 25 or 20 US dollars. Sir, it was impossible from where I was. My biggest mistake, I never kept that paper. I would told God I kept it today. I would have blown it up. Put it as centerpiece in my office. Because what looks so impossible now, my God. Sir, if God tarries, there are some things that look insurmountable to you. But if you will serve him diligently, God in heaven will make all oh my goodness. There are some things that you think are impossible, but I dare you to write the vision. I dare you to make it plain that they may run that read it. For the vision is for an appointed time. Wait for it. It may delay. It will not be denied. For God is not a man that he should lie. Not the son of... Oh my God, my God, my God. Hey. Kai. 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 I feel strong in my spirit. There is something you think are impossible. I dare you to write it down. Be elaborate. But make sure you keep it. Maybe you are looking at yourself. You can't pay your rent. But write it down. You will own seven houses. Oh my God. Right now. Your car is broken. Your car is not working. Write it down. The day is coming. You will own cars. Paid in cash. No notes. No mortgage. For God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you can actually think touch your neighbor say tell the stars write yourself a check put several zeros if God be God it's a matter of time you will cash that check so the Lord says to Abraham your problem is your vision. And he took him abroad. Say, neighbor, let's go abroad. Say, neighbor, let's go abroad. Let me submit to you, abroad is not USA. Abroad is not Europe. Abroad is your mind. Touch your neighbor, say, broaden your mind. Say, broaden your mind. Your mind is too small. Broaden your mind. You are believing God for chum change, chum change, chum change. Broaden your mind. Broaden, tell your neighbor, say, broaden your mind. Enlarge your tentacles. Oof. And he took him abroad. And the Bible says he opened the windows. My goodness, I don't have time. Listen, next service, I will, dip, I will, dip, I will delve deeper. And he opened the windows. Tell your neighbor, say, open the windows. Because there are many right now in close quarters. There are no air. You are in close places. There is no light. Your limitations are the walls of your heart. You still don't believe because you are an immigrant. Because you have no document. But don't you know that God is able to make an immigrant to become a first lady? Don't you know that God is able to make a prisoner to become a prime minister? Don't you know that God can do all things? For with man, this is impossible. For with God, my God. Sit down. I took my car to the car dealer some time ago, and my phone was on the was was my phone was open on the counter, and I'm 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 you know he's giving me the quote for to fix my car and my, an alarm came up on my phone and he caught the alarm he saw it he said man I'd love to be your dad I said what do you mean he said I'm seeing an alarm you saved on your phone there is something I saved on my phone many years ago that I want, I want to do for my father Apostle man. there's something that he, he, every morning it rings and I see it I will do this for my father I'm not going to say it and he said, I'd love, love to be your father. I said, what do you mean I saw it? I said, oh, I laughed. Sir, when I wrote it, it sounded impossible. As it stands now, I have done more than that. As it stands now, this small boy, 
this my boy, this my boy. Kanzai, sir, when you write it down, sir, it looks big when you write it down, but keep serving God. Give it time. Hi, Zai. Three years ago, I knelt before my father and the Lord. I said, Dad, I, I dropped a seed before him. I dropped a seed. I said, Dad, pray for me. I want to do, I gave a, a ridiculous figure. I want to do this in the future. He prayed for me. Sir, as at Friday night, I, oh my goodness. Comes I, as at this week. I had to, I got home. I was praying, I said, Lord, so you mean that I prayed for is done? He said, ask him for another one. Yeah. On my knees, I asked God for something terrible. I said, Father, I want to give this to my father. Right now it sounds big, oh, but I know this God. He now see I. What have you written down? What have you written down? What dreams have you, have you written down? He brings him out. He said, Abraham, look to the heavens. Abraham looked up. What do you see? I see stars. Can you count them? Lord, what do you mean? Count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 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 ten eleven, twelve. So there is a cluster here, Lord. Eleven, twelve, fourteen. Sorry, I'm sorry. I miscounted. No, can I do it again? Sure. Do over. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 16. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm making mistakes. Take your time, Abraham. Count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 19, 20. Sorry, sorry. 16, 17, 14. Lord, it's impossible to count. Lord, it's impossible. This is what I'm trying to tell you. As long as you are not able to number the stars, if God be God, you can't be able to number your children. Stand for your feet. Let me profess her. By the power of the Holy Ghost, as the earth remains and as the Lord lives, God will bless you. You will have blessings above. Your blessings shall be like the stars of heaven, like the sands of the seashore. You will prosper on the left. You will prosper on the right. God will bless you. The Holy Ghost will bless you. Lift your hands and Lord, I swear allegiance to you. Say, Lord, I swear my allegiance to you. Open your mouth and begin to declare your allegiance to God. Swear your allegiance to him. Swear your allegiance. Swear your allegiance to God. Declare your allegiance. For God I live. For God I live. I will serve God all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. We have to wrap this up. God bless you. You may be seated. If you are watching online, type it now. Say, tell the stars. Type it now. Say, can't say, tell the stars. Say, tell the stars. Type it. Hashtag it on your phone. Tell the stars. Tell the stars. Anyone who is a dreamer here, type it. Tell the stars. Tell the stars. If you are watching online, push the like button. Now push it. Push it. Push it. Type it. Tell the stars. And when you tell the stars, begin with yourself. Glory to God.